Hi, my name is Vida Spinkavichus and today I'd like to show you how to play and master wonderful piece of music air in D major by Johann Sebastian Bach from Orchestral Suite number no. 3. Before we begin, let me introduce you to you this piece and uh, it is really important that you understand several points before you begin to practice. So the first thing you need to know is the structure or the form of this piece, okay? So before we practice, let's discuss the form of the piece. The form of, of this air is uh, very typical for Baroque period is binary form. It consists of two parts which are repeated. The first part ends in, uh, in the cadence of uh, in the key of A major which is a dominant key of D major and the seventh part uh, starts from A major from the dominant but ends of course in the tonic key of D major okay so that's the basic structure and uh, of course uh, there are several keys uh, used in the piece in the course of the piece and um, the first modulation it, it occurs in measure measure five with uh, with addition of G sharp, which is a leading tone to to a major scale. Okay, and then the second modulation with the cadence uh, is in measure ten. It is in in the key of B minor, which is of course uh, a relative key of D major, relative minor key. It also has the same number of accidentals, by the way, two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. And then uh, Bach moves uh, again through dominant key in, the, uh, in measure 12 and uh, through various sequences uh, continues to climb and uh, uh, finishes the piece in the cadence of D major. Okay, that's the basic tonal structure, tonal plan. So now we know the basic structure, bi binary form, tonal plan. Let's, uh, let's now discuss uh, uh, various points we need to remember while practicing. Okay? What's the best way to start practicing? So because it is not a very long piece and very slow and um, uh, not too technically challenging, uh, it might be possible for you to, to tr try to play from the beginning till the end, just to uh, make sure you understand the structure and uh, uh, feel the beautiful melody and harmony. But if that fails, go back, let's go back from the beginning and work a little bit on, on several points. First of all, a very important point is posture, how you sit. At, on the on the organ bench, okay, we sit in the middle, of course, uh, of the of the keyboard, and uh, the the posture should be, uh, the the position should be we should be straight, and our uh, body should be relaxed, and uh, 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 our feet should be relaxed also. Uh, the height of the bench should be such that the feet uh, could be hovering just uh, above the keys. But not, it could be touching, but not uh, pressing, okay? And the, the distance from the keys, keyboard and the bench is such that you, when you sit normally, when you sit, uh, you have to, you have to, um, you have to, your feet should, should be just uh, touching the sharp keys, okay? So that the, the, the thing about the posture. Next thing about uh, this piece and performance is uh, to remember the hand and feet position. Okay, how you how you play. Okay, let's let's try it from the beginning and you will hear. So that's the 
couple of first measures here in the beginning of the piece. You see, uh, my posture is and posi hand position is such that I try not to lift my fingers. The fingers have to remain in contact with the keys all the time, regardless whether they are playing or not. That's very economical movement of fingers, you see. And then you can control your touch, your articulation, release and uh, attack very, very easily. But if you try to do this piano uh, technique when you uh, lift the finger high and, uh, and uh, use the wrist and, uh, and the hand uh, and do such a motion, then your control of the releases is not particularly good, okay? Or might be not particularly good. So that's the thing about uh, finger uh, hand position. Do not uh, do not lift your your fingers. Okay, you feel the contact with the keys at all times. The same applies with uh, uh, with the feet also. When you play with the feet, okay. <coughs> always are in contact with the pedal board with the pedal keys would not lift lift entire leg okay uh, always feel the, the the pedal board okay very important that you try not to look uh, at the keyboard when you're playing okay if you are just the beginning or starting starting to play the piano do not look <coughs> Okay, that's not very good. Look at the music, okay, not uh, on the key, at the keyboard and not on the at the pedals. Okay, try to look at the music because it's very important that your feet remember the the pedal board position, the position of where the each key is, uh, uh, where each key is. So the way to remember is is to prepare each foot for the next key. It's called pedal preparation. Okay? For example, let me play for you the first measure for the uh, of the pedal part. Okay, that's uh, the pedal part moves nicely in, in eight notes throughout the piece as you noticed, okay? But uh, uh, remember uh, when I talked about pedal preparation, okay? Left foot is D, right foot is also D. But then the next uh, movement is with the left feet. When, when my left foot releases this beginning D, it moves right, right straight to the next key that it's supposed to be, pl be playing uh, next, C-sharp. This one. Yeah, that's the left, left, uh, left foot toe. Okay? So that's all very important that you prepare for, the, for each note with each foot in advance. Prepare. Just uh, imagine. Okay? When you release your right foot, you move next right away to the next pedal. That way you could be very very sure with with your pedal technique and you never miss a note. Okay? Because you prepare in advance and then you never have to look at the next at the next key, at the next uh, your note because you you are prepared for it, okay? So that's very important. Pedal preparation.